Happy Tuesday morning. Happy Tuesday afternoon. Happy Tuesday. It's a happy Tuesday because you know where we're going when we leave here at 1205? <laughs> where are we going? Mike's. Mike's. And where are we going to eat? Veggies. Vegetables. Fried chicken. Yes. Good. Tea. Good. They have the best tea in the world. They do. Um, it's an exciting day because we are opening up the city of Ball Ground again to a full-blown historical meeting tonight in the community building. Correct. And the community building has a history, and I understand it's about to be improved. Is that right? Well, I'm not sure if it's going to be improved or if it's going to be replaced. Replaced, yeah. It's still, I think, up in the air. But Jenny Byers is a good one to ask about mm -hmm, the community mm -hmm. center because she and a lot of the members of the community years ago saw the need for, you know, the town to have somewhere right. for the, the people to meet and to, you know, have events, et cetera. And the citizens, literally, they raised the money, mm -hmm. they, you know, handled it, built the community center there uh, on Civic Drive in Ball Ground. And uh, it has played an important role in, you know, you and events. I weren't, well, you and I weren't there when, but many, many years ago they did, I think it was a fundraiser they did, and they, it was the Hee Haw of Ball Ground. And this weekend I got to see some pictures where Carol Goforth, who is a gospel singer, wonderful, beautiful lady, did a part at that event. And then um, uh, Miss Laura Mae Mitchell also did Mini Pearl at that event, which was really cool with her hat and her price tag on it. And then Shirley Prater did Loretta Lynn, except her name was, they, they changed their names to right. not, you know, copyright infringement. Right. But it was so cool, and that was at the community building. And it was, once again, the community coming together to raise money for something else. And that's something Ball Ground really enjoys doing. Mm -hmm. I see so many people getting together, renting that space for benefits for people who maybe have lost their home, maybe fighting medical issues. So the community building, number one, it has great parking. Number two, fantastic location, um, has, you know, plenty of space in there and has a pretty cool kitchen. And you know what I remember about that kitchen? Cooking in it. I'm Where sure. did I meet you? Where did I meet you? At that kitchen. Uh oh. We're going to have to take a commercial break. <laughs> We've got a technical issue. Hold on just a minute. <laughs> We're just going to keep going. But um, I met you at that kitchen at the community building because I was doing an art event with uh, Larry Dodson, who had just done all the houses, mm -hmm. the historical houses. And then you volunteered that day to come and to help us. And that's where I met you. And that's been seven years has it been seven years? It would have been 15. I had just moved in. Six years. Okay. Uh, no, six, six. Sorry. I moved to Valley Street in 2016. So it would have been 2016. Okay. So five, five years? years? No, it's been longer than that because we've been down there six. Well, however long you've been, I've been. Six. Six so, years. Yeah. So, yeah. so we kind of were the newcomers, but I was one of the old timers because my grandmother took me there as a child. Before you and Don fell in love with your Valley Street location, had you ever been to Ball Ground before? We drove through it often, yeah, because it was so unique. We went to the Mustard Seed Cafe mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. you know, things I like that. that. Yep. Uh, but no, we're now, again, we moved into our office and worked there in 09, but I lived there. I moved there mm -hmm. and made it my home in 16. But um, I knew a lot of people through the Business Association and, you know, di different. Uh, clubs and organizations and I remember through a one business, of the first in a meetings, business capacity. You shared this with me a long time ago that one of the first meetings you and Don attended, there was a lot of talk about Ball Ground becoming a walking yes, community. Yes, yes, yes. And that was very right. important. Right. Well, yeah. and I've told you this story before, but it's, um, you know, typical man and wife mm -hmm. relationship discussion because I wanted that little, I call it the little yellow house because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I grew up in a little yellow house mm -hmm, and I just mm -hmm. you know I thought it was perfect for its location because we had clients in, <clears throat> excuse me we had clients in Pickens and in Cherokee and in Forsyth you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. and I, I thought you know this is kind of the middle of all of that this, right. this would be great and Don just you know he wanted a more traditional he wanted to build an office building mm -hmm. and I'm just you know at that point in time it was not not a good option for us and uh, 
So we looked and looked at Laura Mays, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Valley Street property, and we were actually thinking about maybe locating in Cumming. We mm -hmm. looked at some property in Cumming, and we looked and looked and looked, and I think we were probably looking for property for our office. When, at the time, it was a Ryan's restaurant. We stopped mm -hmm. at Ryan's, mm -hmm. and as you walked into their little lobby area, there was this huge multi-county map. Mm -hmm. And as we're waiting in line, he's studying this map. And he says, you know, sweetie, look at this right here. That little Valley Street house, it's right in the middle of all of our clients. And I'm going, oh, no, <laughs> really? I told you several times. Yeah, I <laughs> never said that. I just said, really, what, that? <gasps> yeah, and he had this great idea that since it was centrally located, that might work out after all, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh, honey, so you're so you got smart. Your way discreetly. Yes, <laughs> yes, and it was a great idea. Just because yeah. I'd had it first, I wasn't going to ruin it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, and I was very blessed to, to end up there and still blessed. And when y'all bought the property to begin with, you changed it a little bit to make it your offices. Yeah, drastically, but you changed it. Right. A little well, bit. we had to do things like we had to have the wiring. The Cat Five wiring mm -hmm. run, and, and we had a telephone have to do that system. Because ETC has everything that you don't have to well, do. Well, that, that was before wireless was yeah. really, you know. Yeah. But in our line of business, we really needed hard wire because at that point in time, Wi-Fi was not as sophisticated, mm -hmm. as strong. You know, the bandwidth, all those little words that I sort of kind of know what I'm talking about. But yeah, we had ETC from the very beginning, Brother Jimmy, mm -hmm. Brother Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah, he came out and he was our, our salesman. He was so nice and we'd go next door in the summertime when ETC had their annual hot dog grilling. <laughs> yeah, get us a hot dog. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We've been very satisfied with ETC. I have ETC now. And thank goodness the new communities that are coming to town have come on board with ETC. And mm -hmm. so our new development that is going to have beautiful townhomes from 325 to 450 walking distance to town and our homes that are going to be 450 and up um, those are all going to be located walking distance to town mm -hmm. so Don didn't live to see it but you are seeing well when the when town we become everything that they said it would be one of the um, things that sealed the deal for us to have the office in ball ground was the city gave a presentation of what they wanted the future of ball ground to look like. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was wonderful. And they still have the drawings, I'm sure, that mm -hmm. they would be happy to show you about develop, developing it into a walking community. At that point in time, the new school had not been built. Mm -hmm. um, there were several things. You know, there were no sidewalks mm -hmm. all the way from, you know, Valley Street down to the... Uh, to the Bob Grand Pharmacy. To the pharmacy, you right. You literally walk to the pharmacy I don't know, what is downtown. that? Is that a Holcomb Bridge? Uh-huh. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, a lot has happened Howell since Bridge. then. Howell, Howell Bridge, Bridge, right, Howell. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the city's vision is, is coming to pass. Absolutely. Now, you know, the city only has so much control over that because mm -hmm. personal property is personal property and the property right. only owners get to decide mm -hmm. what they're going to do with it. But they have made it as easy as possible, you know, that they can legally. Right. They roll out the red carpet, not the red tape. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point in time, ball ground has exploded with growth. Right. And the, um, I think the residential is probably ahead of the business development. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's so much potential on Main Street. If, if the property owners on Main Street wow. would just... Would give up the buildings and yeah. let the business come in there. I think yeah. that, to me, working downtown... I see people <clears throat> who walk up, they get out of their car, and they walk up to our, we love the Cajun restaurant. It's not open on Monday and Tuesday. The Donner, not open on Monday, it, I think it is open on Tuesday. And then the Italian, not open until certain days. And so I see people disappointed when they turn around and come back and they have a couple of choices and they come back south of our mm -hmm. office. And I would love to see every single building in town full of vibrant, happy, business owners and I would love to see people walking to those businesses well and the buildings are there the buildings are there if you know I, I'm not sure what the government can do to 
entice property owners or, you know, whatever, you know, stick, carrot, encourage, I don't know, yeah, encourage, encourage business yeah. owners encourage business owners. because they're really, it's, <laughs> it, it's hurting the future of the town. Sure it is. Sure it is. And I know everybody has their own personal reasons for doing, you know, this, that, and the other. But if you're a long time ball ground resident, Right. And you own that property, do it Do it for the town. Do it for the town. You know, one of the coolest things, and I got to be a part of this, I sold the little house where the, the dog business used to be. Yeah. And <clears throat> I sold that, and they just moved down the street. We were afraid they were leaving ball ground, but they actually got a better property. And they have a little park down there where you can walk your dogs and you can have play time with your animals. And they didn't leave ball ground, they just did better in ball ground. Right. And I love that about them right. because they're very they're very community oriented, they're good people. And they they chose that little spot that I ended up selling and they stayed there a while and then they said, We can do better and so they just went down the street and they were able to get a building down the street. There are so many buildings sitting in ball ground that are doing nothing but sitting there. And that's tough. That's well tough. and and the potential is great mm -hmm. and I think again you know I don't own that property everybody has their own reasons right. for moving or not moving you know and, and getting the ball rolling with development but it's kind of sad because well for instance um, I saw something just the other day there was a question in my uh, my community's Facebook page mm -hmm. was asking about the rocks mm -hmm. in the rock shop right and one of the reasons that Don and I would, you know, drive through ball ground occasionally was, you know, to see the rocks. And it was mm -hmm. in those days before we even moved our office to ball ground. Uh, we had encountered Oscar Ro Robertson, mm -hmm. uh, Roberts, uh, a couple of times. And he was, a, he was an odd duck. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but he must have liked us because he was always very pleasant and even mm -hmm. asked, do you want to go in the shop? But mm -hmm. we, you know, we didn't. <laughs> Didn't need any rocks that day. Uh, and w how wonderful that would be as a museum. Oh, absolutely. If they yeah, could, yeah. you know, uh, it, it could and be being a... And part of the historical society, wouldn't it be cool if it could be rocks and the history of all grounds? Well, you know, the, the, one of the reasons we're meeting in the community center is we, we do not have a historical society mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. and we're not a large enough group. I mean, right now, Cherokee County, has a wonderful project going on in Canton. They have purchased the old um, police station mm -hmm. and they're doing a renovation and addition and it's going to be fantastic mm -hmm. once they get it and through. And I'm sure they got some grant money. Well, so. I hope so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope so. But it's, it's going to be wonderful and they're going to allow us to archive, you know, some ball ground materials there. So that's great and helps with not needing a building because mm -hmm. really, you need a building for archives, right? You know, meetings, stuff like that. Traditionally, we've met at City Hall in the council chambers, mm -hmm. but after the whole COVID flu thing, you know, da da da, it's still just not back to normal. So mm -hmm. we chose to meet the remainder of this year mm -hmm. in the community center. Um, and it has great parking, and it's it does, yeah, located, yeah. So the, yeah. The parking is yeah really yeah. important to somebody yeah. who threw their back out picking up a <laughs> crock pot this morning. We got to tell y'all, she limped in here. She and I looked like flame ducks. Well, I felt sorry for us. We were I did. It. Yeah. <laughs> we're pitiful. I'm like, bless our hearts. <laughs> we're pitiful. Yeah, we are. Oh. But anyway, um, the community center is a great location mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for that reason, for people right. that don't want to walk a long way. And I guess, uh, you know, we're getting the new parking area mm -hmm. on Main Street eventually if once all the... If they ever get the rocks out of there. <laughs> you got <coughs> baby week, steps. <coughs> well, for weekends, they've been moving rocks, but it doesn't look like anything's gone yet. And it's a lot of rocks. It's a lot of rocks, yeah. Well, and you and I, <laughs> uh, when we went to view that house that was listed and it had tombstones. Oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> the military <Yeah>. marble <laughs> tombstones. They were yeah, the, the yeah. mess ups where yeah, they had, yeah. you, you know, know, somebody worked at the marble mine because they, they did their uh, walk path to their front door with monuments that were miswritten. I guess you, and they misspelled their name or something. <laughs> yes, it's like, it oops, weird, you know. We looked down and we're like, oh, we're walking on a grave. Oh, 
up it was, the courtyard. Yeah. And <laughs> what, where were we the other day? You said, look at that pink marble. Oh, my gosh. Right there Right there at the corner. At the tennis courts. At the tennis yes, courts. Yes. Yeah, this big, long Beautiful stripe of, piece of pink, pink marble. piece of pink marble in downtown yeah. Ball Ground, and it's right at the tennis courts, and it's used as a border. And it's everywhere in Ball yeah, Ground. Yeah, you know, yeah. how much of it is buried now, mm -hmm. you know, because all the, the, the homes have been restored when they yep. start digging. Uh, and uncover right. what marble steps used to be there, marble <laughs> walls, and this kind of well, thing. Well, you were you got to meet uh, Woody Snell, who is the developer on the big project mm -hmm. in Ball Ground. And one of the things I absolutely fell in love with this man first meeting because he loves the history and he loves preserving, and he is so excited to take down. There are some rock stacked walls inside the property he's purchasing and they're going to remove those rock stacked walls and they're going to use it in the entrance to Farmer's Crossing. Great. That's awesome. I think awesome. it's really, really cool because yeah. we have pictures. Well, you know, tell Woody, I know where he can get a good deal on some marble right now if he wants to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but these rocks were stacked years and years ago in the terraces and, and the farmer and the Haynes family remember when, you know, that was a big deal. Right. And, and so I showed him pictures of it and he said, oh, and so he immediately shared that with his landscaper and he said, we have to incorporate this in the opening of Farmer's Crossing. And I said, how cool is hey, that? You know, at the Farmer's Crossing, and I know the story behind Perfect. that. Did you Perfect. tell it already on I, your show? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, tell that. About the bridge that's right. there. Yeah, yeah. It's and back in the woods. You can't is. see it unless you're and, out and there the walking. And the bridge, and, and I don't know if, if uh, Sue made the sign that said Farmer's Crossing. I believe she did. And it's been there forever and ever. And so when we first started meeting with developers, I think this is like the third developer we'd met with and talked to. And, and that just stuck. And so I said, you know, if you don't mind, would you consider this? And so their first plan that they presented didn't say that on it. And then the third set of plans was like, and I said, there Yay, it is, there it is. Farmers Crossing. And it was absolutely beautiful. And and the whole plan is to connect walking downtown with the walking 50-acre park with Mountain Brook, which is where well, you live. Well, and Mountain Brook, people are excited about that oh, sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I probably won't be walking from Mountain Brook to... She can't uh, walk today because her hip's killing her. <laughs> when I lived on Valley Street, and I was like, what, three blocks away, <laughs> we saying, we'll I walk. did walk downtown <laughs> yeah. several so, times. Yeah. Twice, three times, yeah. But, but it's going to be, if you live in Mountain Brook or if you live in Farmer's Crossing, you can take your children, not get in your car, take their basketball, take their football, take their mm -hmm. soccer ball, walk out to Calvin Farmer Park, walk to downtown, have an ice cream, have pizza, have right. a hot dog, have some great Cajun food, go by and, and get a meal and sit at the picnic tables and you never get in your car. And that's the first presentation you saw in Ball right. Ground was about that very thing. The walking community, yeah, and yeah. It, it, it's coming to pass. It is. It's really cool. How many cool. years later, though? Wow, well, 11, a few, but 11, 12 years, there have been yeah. some challenges along the way. <laughs> there have, there have. Economically, et cetera, so. Well, one of the things that I would love to see happen, and you know, we love Andy Griffith. We, we watch Aunt B a lot. And the house beside Dominic's, which we got to give a shout out to Dominic. What a fantastic guy and, and what great pizza. Um, the house next door to him is in the process of being worked on. And we understand there was a price put on it lately. And it has the front frontage on Gilmer Ferry, but then it has its own parking behind it. In the back. And you could literally come behind there and build another building or you could access it through parking. So if somebody is looking for a business location in Ball Ground, if it didn't sell last week, it was still available. This is, and we call it the, the Mayberry House because it looks like you've gone to see Barney and Andy and Aunt B and you're sitting on the porch. And he's already done quite a bit of work in he there, has. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the back of that property is what makes it so There's a lot of property there. back yeah. there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and when he priced it, he priced it to me about six years ago at the same exact thing he priced it for today. And when he priced it then, he said, I know you think that's outrageous. And I said, well, not really, not seeing what's happening in Ball Ground, I really didn't think it was outrageous. And in today's economy, I think it's dead on point. You know, it's exactly what it needs to be priced at. So if you're looking to move to downtown Ball Ground, it, it has been priced now and it 
was available last week. So. I've been in that building. It was an insurance company. It was. Yeah. It was. Yep. Yep. And and you are my super sniffer. So because my <laughs> allergies are so bad, when I have homes that I have questions about the condition of what might be behind the walls. Which is a nice way of saying I have a big nose. I, I take Vicki because <laughs> she she is very sensitive to all kinds of things, and I say, okay, could I be in this office? I had my office in a 1940s building, and for many, many years, I was getting Decadron shots because I couldn't breathe. And it's because I was in this old house that had not been restored properly. Right. And then we took it apart, took it down to the wire, uh, even jacked up the floors who were sinking in the ground and on the dirt, and we took care of all those problems. And once we did it, then there was no problem with the air, you know, and everything smelled fresh and fine and good. But you have to address that when you're looking at old right. historical buildings, right. and that's a thing. Well, you know, when I was looking before I decided on my Mountain Brook house, remember you'd drive me by all these mm -hmm. historical homes and go, oh, you ought to get that one and restore it. And yeah. I'm like, well, first I'd have to buy it, and then I'd need like a couple of hundred thousand extra <laughs> yeah, yeah. to restore it. But they really are, you know, if you can, if, if you're able to do that. Well, um, you know, we saw the house at 887 Old Canton Road. And it was on the market a year. Mm -hmm, and, I remember. And multiple, multiple people fell in love with it, mm -hmm. fell in love with it, fell in love with it, but couldn't see the vision of finishing it. And the precious young couple who bought it, they have gutted that house completely. But you know what? They're maintaining the exact character of that historical home. And I love that about them because they had the vision, what is your saying, um, preserving the past, embracing, embracing the, future. the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what they're doing because they are preserving the past, but they have children that they need to raise in that house. And so they had to change things. They right, had to remove right. some things that were in it that were not right. good. And I think so. sometimes preservation, uh, it's possible to preserve the integrity of the era maybe on the exterior mm -hmm. and redo the interior. Yeah, and that's yeah. okay. So it smells I think, fresh and clean. you know, the, the purists and, and don't, misunderstand I have, I appreciate the purists because they want it restored uh, just like it used to be when right. Don and I moved our office to Jasper to 35 North, North Main, Main. Mm -hmm. it was fantastic and that's what they had done mm -hmm. they had restored it to its original look mm -hmm. they chose paint colors right. you know they did a lot of research mm -hmm. and they had a gentleman I don't remember his name now but he was um, very much a historical uh, I don't think he was a professor, but he was, I, I would call him an expert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they re remodeled it. I mean, at one time it had been a grocery store. Right. It had been a lot of right. things. Townsend's grocery store. And they had, uh, it was just, it was phenomenal. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of issues with those really, really, really high ceilings and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, wi Fi didn't work very well. Um, it just maybe the nature of what was inside the building mm -hmm. or we were on the bottom floor with the floor on top of us, I don't know. So we had some challenges, but that level of preservation was, it, it's very expensive, mm -hmm. extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate someone who might want to come in and like I said, maintain the integrity of the historical look on the outside, mm -hmm. but then do what they needed to do yeah. to make it comfortable as their yeah. home, yeah. to make it comfortable as their office. To make it Correct. Healthy for your family, yeah, for yeah. And, More yeah. than anything yeah. to make it yeah. healthy. Well, so. I think Tim has prepared something that we're going to share, and this has pictures, probably houses, flowers, I don't know what all. So y'all just sit back. You're going to get to hear a little bit of an in the garden with some music and some beautiful flowers and beautiful pictures, and we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to try to entice you to come to Ball Ground tonight because the Historical Society is going to introduce a new book and it has to do with dirt roads, dirt floors, dirt something. Raised on red dirt. Raised on red dirt. And uh, there is something about putting your toes in that red dirt that is just awesome. And we're going to share that story with you when we come back in just a few minutes. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, 
making a masterpiece, or just making memories. Writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. ATC knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact ETC. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. some photos now from is it ball ground is it um ball ground pictures um flowers old homes is that where we're going producer there you go there's beautiful downtown yay. ball ground yay and now that shop has completely changed and it's white and it is now a what is it a garden center well on the, the corner again the barber shop's <laughs> still there right yeah, uh, but i don't know it what's is. on the very yep, end yep Yep, and, and that, I don't know how anybody got that shot with no traffic on downtown mm. ground. <laughs> we roll out the red carpet, not, not the, the red tape. tape. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And again, that building has changed now. It's completely white, so it doesn't I saw Helen like the other day. Yeah, yeah. She moved back to ball ground. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That is a neat, neat, neat place. Okay, have we got any more ball ground pictures? Okay, all right. We don't know what happened to that. All right, now we're gonna tell folks about Sue Hansard. She um, grew up, you said, in the Macedonia community. Mm -hmm. And um, worked in the area, in the Canton area, most of her life. And probably did not ever forget those days as a child, farming and in the red clay and the, and the dirt and farming. So, is this her first book? Has I believe it's her first published book. Now, she has written stories before, mm -hmm. and she presented a couple of those uh, at one of our programs in the past. Mm -hmm. And she's a wonderful storyteller and an excellent writer. Um, so my understanding is, is this uh, Raised on Red Dirt is a compilation of those short stories that uh, we call it pioneer-ish Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Growing up on the farm, you know, mm -hmm. before there was electricity, before there was running water, mm -hmm. indoor plumbing, that kind of thing. Uh, and just the, the benefits and the challenges mm -hmm. of growing up on a farm. Um, I, I think what might be of particular interest is she lived there in a time when things were changing. Mm -hmm. And even now in the ball ground, you know, as we go through all the changes that we're encountering, I'm sure there was some reluctance at time, unless you're a woman getting a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so th I'm sure there were some challenges of... Speaking of washing machines, did you ever wash in a ringer washing machine? Oh, yeah. My grandma had one on our back porch. did you love oh, that? No. I did. I oh, you're that. not. You know. 
Yes. You're nuts. Did you know why I loved it? Because our Did you get to porch, turn the crank? No, our back porch had the washer and then we had the, the rinse thing sitting out there. But then Mama had her 55 Oldsmobile parked back there at the back door by the screened in porch. And I would put in a load of clothes to wash and I'd say, Mama, I'm out here doing laundry. But I would jump in the car and I would go back and forth in the driveway. That's how I learned to drive. And then Mama would say, are those clothes done yet? No, I'm running them back through the rinse for the third time. I want to make sure they're good and clean. Yeah, that didn't and happen really, in I my experience. Yeah. I was driving up down the driveway in the Oldsmobiles. <laughs> Oh, Girl. You and I saw a car like that one day, and I told you, I said, that's just like yep. the car I learned to drive in. I remember that story. That, I that just is knew. So funny, but You're that a mess. The washing machine kept me in the driver's seat. So yeah. <laughs> no, we were actually washing clothes, and it was, so yeah, yeah. 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 I remember when um, things changed for whatever reason, and I would go with my mom to the laundromat. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a washer and dryer at home, and we had to go to the laundromat, and I really enjoyed that. That was, you know, getting out of the house. Mm -hmm. I got a Coke and popcorn mm -hmm. at the, you know, mm -hmm. and then had to help. our laundromat in Jasper had that was the coolest thing ever? Lewis Atkins owned the laundromat, and it was right behind the Greystone Cafe where Mama had a restaurant. Okay. And then the Greystone Village Apartments were there. And then the laundromat was right there behind it. It had a jukebox, and it played uh, five songs for a quarter. Wow five songs for a quarter, so I would always have enough money to do the laundry, and Mama would always send me to do the laundry there, because her well in Talking Rock was always dry, always dry, and it was always a problem. And so I was so happy when they got county water out there. But I would go to the laundromat, and sometimes I wouldn't get the clothes completely dry, because I would take part of the drying money, and I would put it in the jukebox, uh -huh. and so I would kind of well, Mama, they didn't get quite dry. <laughs> you need to send more quarters next time. <laughs> Put them on hang yeah. <laughs> so, but there's something about laundromats don't much exist anymore. I mean, there's one in Jasper I mm -hmm. know of. I don't know of any anywhere around us. There was one, well, the, the same one that I went to as a child in Austell. And I think at the time it was called, um, well, Austell Laundromat. But everybody called it Jack's because Jack, whoever, uh, had owned it. And then his son, Jack Jr., mm -hmm. owned it, that kind of thing. But, you know, that was um, kind of an adventure for a little girl. And, you know, at that age, you like to help. Like Riker. I was telling my mom yesterday, we were talking about Riker and just how <laughs> perfectly cute he is. Um, I got him a little cleaning set because, you know, kids like to help mm -hmm. the grown-ups. He does, yep. But he's not all that crazy about his kid size broom. He wants, uh, he wants the big your broom. broom. Yes, he wants the big, which he's kind of a little wrecking crew yes, with the broom. I have to hide the broom before he comes. I have to I hide too, the broom. I do too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but at the laundromat, there was, yeah, I, I, and I, I can't say I enjoy it like I did as a kid, but folding the warm clothes, you know, and all that. You, it was a control issue. You had control yeah. of that laundry, yeah. Yeah. and you could yeah. do that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Sue's uh, presentation tonight. And I had said earlier, her book is available for sale. They're $15 a copy, mm -hmm. and she will take a check. But if you ha can bring cash, mm -hmm. that is certainly easier for everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'll sign them, you know, dedicate them. And we're going to be dedicating one of her books to the Ball Ground Library. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I think that's kind of special to number what one to have people, published a book. What if people have just moved to the area? What can you tell them with, that would make them want to join the historical society? Well, I guess the um, the variation mm -hmm. in the programs. Uh, most often, it is a local presentation from a ball ground uh, resident mm -hmm. who's grown up there and. Uh, in the past, we've done presentations on the Franklin Gold Mine. It had a huge turnout for that one. Um, the old bank that, what would they call it? The bank that somebody broke? The bank or, that, yeah, uh -huh. the, the depression. Yeah. yeah, somebody built a house. Yeah. Yeah, and that house took all the money and then the uh, And then the bank failed, failed. Yeah. yeah. It failed. Uh, you know, presentations like that of the old bank. Um, the diaper factory, mm -hmm. many people who had worked at the Has diaper ever factory. Done anything on the old Coca-Cola plant? Because the Not to my knowledge. Coke bottles, that was a big deal. When I was a Coke collector back in the 70s, um, a ball ground Coke bottle was like one of the most 
those are the ones you want. They yeah. were $85 a piece. Well, yeah. not being a native of Ball Ground, I don't have the advantage of all of those memories, but the board, those people who started mm -hmm. the Ball Ground Historical Association, or um, society rather, uh, they all, as if, the story as I have heard it, is they had a reunion at the old elementary school because it was time to close that school mm -hmm. and build the new one. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people from the community that had been to school there got together and it was just so wonderful that they said, let's, let's start mm -hmm. a historical society for a ball ground. Mm -hmm. And they did. And that was, I believe it was in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I didn't move there, you know, as my home until 16. Mm -hmm. And so my involvement with the historical society has been, you know, not that long. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I know in previous presentations that I've heard about, um, there was a, there's a lot of basketball players, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and they have, uh, or I should say we, we have, um, Christmas ornaments with different historical properties, mm -hmm. uh, like the Ho Miller House mm -hmm. and um, the old school. That's a whole the story old, in itself. Is it going to be open to the public again anytime you soon? You know, that's a personal residence, a yeah, private residence. Yeah, so um, yeah. I'm sure they will at some point, you know, if they're asked. Maybe a Christmas tour. A tour of homes or something like that, yeah. Um, but we, we, we have expanded our programs a little bit outside of ball ground, for instance, our friend Paul Nelson is going to make a presentation next month prior to 9/11, mm -hmm. which is Riker's birthday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talk about Riker. Um, he's from New York, and he was there at 9/11 at have Ground all Zero. The DVDs I need to give y'all that he could do a PowerPoint. Yeah, well, we're going to have to find out a way. We yeah. don't have any equipment, you know, in the council we'll chambers. Yeah, yeah, if we can put that together, I think that would be wonderful. Um, but anyway, so we'll have a, a, nine, a commemoration mm -hmm. of 9-11 because mm -hmm. that affected the world, you yeah, know, well, ball yeah, ground included. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in September, Mike Smith is going to do a presentation on the history of the ball ground volunteer fire department. Mm -hmm. And, Which um, used to be the only fire department. Correct, there, yeah. 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 And And had it not been for them things would probably be a lot different mm -hmm. in Ball Ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All those historical homes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Mike's a great guy. And he also has written a book. And I'm hoping he will bring his book when it's time for him to present mm -hmm. as well uh, a devotional of uh, um, you know, Christian material, mm -hmm. I guess you'd call it. Mm -hmm. he, he's a wonderful writer as well mm -hmm. and has such a, a way with bringing home some pretty deep theological um, thoughts into everyday life mm -hmm. and he, he, he's wonderful and then in October Patsy Jordan who is a native mm -hmm. of Ball Ground is going to do a really phenomenal presentation on the Trail of Tears mm -hmm. and she's done this you know did in you the past. Did you see the photos I took in Alabama on Sunday? I did I saw the, the sign the Trail of Tears yeah. and that's where yeah. you and I are going to go over and have lunch yeah. near this place one day yeah. soon because, you know, we all know that they were removed. We owned at Harris Farm, that was part of a Cherokee village. And so the family got it because they put it in 80 acre tracks and then the lottery came available and that's how people acquired much of their wealth. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew the Trail of Tears was in Pickens County and in Cherokee County, but as we went through into Floyd County and then into Alabama, you realize that these people were really, we know they walked to Oklahoma, but how did they get there? They went through Alabama. Yeah, it's, I'm currently reading Dawn's, yeah, mm -hmm. granddad's uh, Cry of the Eagle, yeah. And it's uh, a very sad experience. But when you say, you know, if someone, the fun of joining the Historical Society is, you learn the history of ball ground mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it, it's pretty colorful now like tonight it's very personal experiences mm -hmm. um, next month again you know since we're doing the 9-11 thing it's not really um, ball ground history mm -hmm. but then the fire department history the mm -hmm. the Indian history mm -hmm. a lot of people have a lot of interest in the Indian history mm -hmm. uh, in ball ground 
and a lot of my neighbors, I know there's an influx of people from other states. Mm -hmm. They're coming from California, they're coming from New Texas, York. Texas, Pennsylvania, yeah. New Jersey. Everywhere. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. And what I've discovered is that we learn history differently. They're not nearly as familiar with, say, uh, the Civil War details as we are because we're taught from a different perspective mm -hmm. depending on what area of the country you're in. You know, you, you do a lot of your local uh, history. People in California know about the gold rush mm -hmm. and, you know, those things that are uh, specific to, to their area. And someone who grew up, quote unquote, in the country in New York probably had a different set of experiences than the way you grew up in the country here in the South. Mm -hmm. Things, you mm -hmm. know, they're just different culturally. Mm -hmm. So, and what's really neat, um, normally we have a community event and, and hopefully that October presentation that Patsy will do for the Trail of Tears mm -hmm. will be, you know, in, include that community. Um, Open up and have some things. Right, the, yeah. the, that component. But as you sit, for me anyway, and listen to the people of Ball Ground, just sit and talk. You remember so and so. Mm -hmm. You remember when so and so was there. And you you do that. You know Miss mm -hmm. Mary's store and all this. Mm -hmm. And you know it. It's you walk by it every day, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily know you're walking by Miss Mary's mm -hmm. store mm -hmm. or Dot's restaurant. Mm -hmm. And Dot's restaurant was maybe more contemporary, you right. know, you know, in the uh, lineage of it the history. It had been a grocery store, I think, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, that mm -hmm. era, and yeah. then the restaurant. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting to sit in, I call it, I got the catbird seat. I sit right in downtown Ballroom, and I see people come and go. Mm -hmm. And um, I hear their accents, and it blows my mind, because I hear no southern accents, none, zero. And I just hear these people talking, and I'm like, are they here to visit? Are they moving in? And then they'll walk in the door. Last week, we had some people come in who somebody had referred them to come and see me about real estate. And I was in a meeting, so Doug got to talk to them. And they want to move to ball ground. And so our new property with the beautiful townhomes and the houses walking distance, they're so excited about it. They're not from around here, y'all. And my granny would say, they ain't from around here, are they? No, well, you know, not. and again, culturally, no, what we... Different. It, it, it's difficult for us to wrap our heads around a concept sometimes because it's not what we're used to. We didn't grow up with that. Like, like cars. Mm -hmm. Here in this area, everybody has a car and everybody drives to work mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you and grow you up... ride the subway. Correct. Yeah. If you grow up in New York or, you mm -hmm. know, Los Angeles, you walk everywhere. Mm -hmm. So a walking community to them is, yeah, that that's yeah. exactly yeah. what I want yeah. because it's what I'm used to. Whereas for us, we might say, well, that'll never work because we have driveways yeah, and we yeah. park, you know, in our Multiple garages. Cars. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of well, thing. Well, you and I have witnessed this and we just cracked up because loving downtown and walking ball around, when they first built the tiny homes, we were like, oh my gosh, who would buy these? You can't even fit your clothes in there. This is never going to work. Are you kidding me? They sold so fast, and they sold so fast, and they were so successful that they went across the road, and they did 10 more, and to me, the 10 on Old Canton, perfect, perfection, because everybody can park right in front of their home, mm -hmm. and they all go in one And they're a little bit bigger homes, they're bigger too. They're bigger homes, yeah. but they don't have a yard to maintain. Right. They don't have worries. They don't have, you know... A, you remember when I had my half acre on Valley Street and it was killing me? When I had your house And on now market, I have less than that. <laughs> well, when I had your house on the market, people would come in and I'd say, let me show you this house. I'd take them down there to see your house. They'd go, oh, that's too much yard. Too I much said, yard. It's only half an acre. And they said, we don't want yard. We don't want anything to maintain. Right. We are retiring. We're going to travel. We don't want a big yard. And I'm like, lady... It's half an acre. It's not a big yard. <laughs> but people, but, yeah. But well, me it, now, yeah. yeah, I have what point three three and plenty of yard. Plenty. Of uh, yard. Well, too much. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm beginning to understand townhomes. Yes. Yes. And yeah. make sure they make some that have masters yes. on the main. Yes. Because yes. some old lady <laughs> might want to move up there one day. That's right. That's right. Because she don't want to cut no grass no more. Yeah. Well, it, it is so weird as we see, and, and only in six years, we're seeing that transition of people walking in the door. And I used to think everybody wants two to five acres and a creek. 
Uh, not anymore. No, not they anymore. They walking mm -hmm. distance to town. They don't want a yard to maintain, and they don't want a hassle. They well, and you know. things like knees hips. Mm -hmm. You don't want stairs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You don't want to go up. I have that upstairs bonus room. I never go up there. Mm -hmm. Scrappy goes mm -hmm. up there a lot. He thinks it's his. And wasn't that enough? One time, that was all it took. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I go up there and change the filter yeah, in yeah, the heating yeah, and air, yeah. and, and that's it. Did we get something now we can share with everybody, y'all? You got something going on, Tim? Have you got, did you get some pictures? Huh? What? <laughs> we're, having a, we're having a problem. Cause Technical we really, difficulties. We really wanted to show you some really cool pictures of all grounded. I don't know what's going on. So we're, they're still working on it. So, but you know, seeing it up close and personal, um, one of the things that I've been really watching from day one, Josh Briggs bought this beautiful historical home in downtown Ballground, and we all figured he took the dozers in, he was gonna destroy it. Absolutely not. He restored it and made it amazing. And it immediately sold just like this. And then he went next door and he built a beautiful white house that everybody refers to it as the hotel house. Right. Because it looks like, it almost looks like you're in gun smoke days and those olden days with those tall buildings. Beautiful, beautiful home. It's on the market for about six forty nine, and absolutely gorgeous. Walking distance to town, walking distance now to the ice cream Now that truly is. That's even closer than my yeah. Valley Street it's, house. It's walking so. distance to the ice cream store. It's walking distance to the ball field. If your children go to school there, it's walking distance to school. And it's right across from the post office. And that was one of the selling points for your property. I would say, well, it's right across from the post office. And they said, well, isn't there a lot of traffic? And I said, I don't know. I never noticed traffic. And I live right down there. It all so, depends on the individual. Yeah. Because for me, having lived in the mountains for so long, you get used to silence. Mm -hmm. And the traffic was an issue for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why Ball Ground has a little bit of everything. It's got the walking community mm -hmm. and city folks. You you get used to it, mm -hmm. and even you know the train when the train would go by. Mm -hmm. Most seven twenty a.m. <laughs> in case you're, but see, I I got used to that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for me, it was a, it was a privacy thing. I yeah. just like yeah. you know being off the grid, yeah. so to speak. I, I can't a little believe bit. we have a picture of Algram with no traffic because traffic is always backed up across the railroad track that is so funny that we that i don't know who took that well job. that was that's a few years that old the, yeah that's yeah. a few years that's old crazy. yeah that's, that's uh yeah. i actually used the highway today instead of going around mm -hmm. and it wasn't too bad i just yeah. i got lucky I yeah that's when that helen ground thing I it, wonder who built piece that. of time that was helen wasn't it she did the ceramics and everything yeah wasn't yeah. that yeah she did the so ceramics. that's been several yeah. years that's yeah pretty cool. that's pretty yeah. cool ball ground has uh grown cool. since yep. then yeah okay we have got pictures of the botanical garden and i want to share this with y'all if you have not seen the botanical garden it's right next door to where vicky's valley street house was i go out there and i take videos and i posted one this morning on youtube so you can check that out and you can see the botanical garden is free it is an effort of much much love by a whole lot of people who just kept on and on and on, working and working and working, and it took them about, was it six years that they've been working on that botanical garden? I believe so, and, if and not longer. And they have done so much. Now look at those mountain views. Is that not beautiful? Oh my gosh. You look took that. that from up on the, okay, I don't know. I That's not where, where I thought it yeah. was. That's, I think mm -mm. that was on Tolona Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, when we see these these beautiful mountains, we get to enjoy them every single day. And I think it's important that we see them from a tourist eye view. Because Is that the bush that we those, got the broke those, the things those off of? Those are Gail Rays, and those oh. are in her yard, and they're absolutely beautiful. And look at those dahlias. Wow. Look at those dahlias. That's amazing. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it's about. I mean, it's about these old timey flowers. Um, if you visit the botanical garden, there's a garden that has the native flowers to Georgia. There's a garden that is the butterfly garden. There are all kinds of things, and you can just walk out there and spend time and enjoy. Look at those dahlias. That's oh gorgeous. My God. Those are the ones that were in North Carolina that I went back to find, and they were gone. Somebody had bought the house and torn the fence down, and the dahlias were gone. And those are zinnias that were actually out on Jerusalem Road. 
I think you and I were out there and took those pictures, and um, that lady has those that come up every single year, and they're absolutely beautiful. Well, I'm really tickled to have uh, their in the botanical garden in ball ground, they have a heritage area, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I have some white peonies in there mm -hmm. that came from the Valley Street mm -hmm. yard. There you go. And I thought that go. was, that's neat to yep. have that there. Yep, that is neat. I passed by, when we went over to the lake house on Sunday, um, I passed by where I used to stop and pay, take pictures of beautiful orange roses every year, and the orange rose bush was gone. Aww. So you have to treasure those plants. And My take rose care bush of them. is blooming again. You know, I was worried about it. Mm -hmm. oh, and it's, it's so pretty. Yeah, oh, it's so blooming. I pulled it out from the wall. Now, that church bit. is one that uh, you and I took a picture of that church, and I can't remember where we were. We were on our way, the back roads out of. Um, is that the one just the other day? Yeah, yeah. it was off Ford Town Road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Black Eyed Susan. Black Eyed Susan. Now that may have been taken in my yard. Now the Black Eyed Susans come back every year, don't they? That's my yard. No, that's. Oh, a, that's the botanical, botanical garden. garden. I see that yeah, now. Yeah. That looked like my one of my trees. And though. that's one of those trees that you want to treasure and keep healthy. And I don't know what you do to keep those big monstrosity trees healthy. Yeah, look at that. Do? They have worked so hard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They work tirelessly. And um, those are grandmother's roses. And grandmother's roses, those they have the most fragrant smell. They're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it's one of those things that all you do is get a cutting from that and you put in a little bit of sand and a little bit of water and then you, you end up with a cutting from your grandmother's roses and they're beautiful. And look at that cross in the background. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? How cool is that? And all of this is free at the Botanical Garden. So if you want to come to downtown ball ground, even if you want to plan an event there, you can call and make an appointment with somebody. And if you want to have a baby shower there, we actually had a baby shower there that we were at. And um, people have gotten married at the Botanical Garden. If you want to make a donation to the garden and then they would do a plaque in memory of somebody, there have been trees planted in memory and in honor of people. So, and that's what it's about. It's that community working hard to give back and it's free to everybody. And I think that's the really cool thing about it is everybody gives of their heart and then they love to see people enjoy it. They don't like to go down there and nobody be busy in the gardens. I went two Friday mornings ago and there was a couple of moms and their two kids down there and they were just walking through the park. And I actually got some pictures of them and you just think about it, it's free. It's just well, free. you need to find some pictures of my backyard with Riker in yes, them. Yes, in the mud. Look at that yeah. rose. Look oh, at that. Oh, my. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't no, that gorgeous? I'm talking about the Valley Street yard when Riker was little and he was out there barefoot. Oh, yes, in bare barefoot. Feet. Yes, yeah. yes. Which we need to talk yes. about the barefoot thing. There's yes. a thing. I yes. read it just yesterday. Yes. Yep. Okay, let's talk about it. Well, grounding. Grounding. As it's called. And that's what Nick's babysitter... Miss Audrey well, this always is, said that's so important. Just read this yesterday. I don't even remember how I happened upon it, but it is the magnetic field in the earth. Somehow our personal magnetic fields get cattywampus. And when you walk about barefoot on the ground, the pull of the magnetism in the earth helps straighten out balance your magnetic field. So there is a real physiological scientific thing about walking barefoot on the ground. Mm -hmm. So when I get home, I'm gonna take my shoes off. I'm gonna ground. go out there and see if I can fix my back. <laughs> and my, and my foot. <laughs> Old age is no place ah, for It's crock time. pot it's injury, yeah. crock pot injury. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, y'all, don't forget tonight at 6.30, the Ball Ground Community Building. Come, and if you want, if you live in there and you'd love to join, love to have you as a member. Um, if you know something about the downtown Ball Ground area or the outlying Ball Ground area, you have some history you would like to share. It would be nice to have some new guests that we haven't had in the past, mm -hmm. somebody that we haven't told that story before. And when you think about the Coca-Cola plant, I'll tell you somebody who would be, be a good one, and I don't think he would do it. We love David Byers, but David Byers' daddy had a garage in downtown Ball Ground where everybody got their cars worked on. And that's something, you know, that's a really cool story. And now that building is, I believe, a wedding venue. So it's very different how these old buildings have evolved into something not at all. Totally like different, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Ford? 
uh, thing, Ford, Ford Place plant, is now a uh, shop. dealership. Yep. It was a dealership, yep. right? Yep. And it's a furniture mm -hmm. Absolutely. store. Absolutely. So yeah. yeah. And then there's always the question. Everybody says, what are they doing with that building on the corner? Well, I don't know. I wish they'd hurry up and finish it because my I can't understanding wait to see it is it's going to be a residence. Okay. Well, yeah. it, it they've worked a long, hard time, and it's getting close. And I noticed lights on the last couple of nights. I really like the those black shutters that they I put don't up. Know about those. I, I like them. They look a little coastal. But I, I like that's them. That's what I think. Yeah. It's weird to me because yeah. this is not the coast. Right. So I think that's what I said. Well, they're right there on the corner of the highway. And so, they're trying yeah. to block out noise and light and tra yeah. traffic. Well, just, and, yeah. I know how I was because, you know, people on the sidewalk could stand and watch TV through my front window. <laughs> yeah, they could. And sometimes I thought they were. <laughs> yeah, they could. Oh, the news is on. <laughs> so, yeah, that, you know, could be a thing. Yeah, but Ball Ground is open for business. If you are looking for property, please stop by. Our office is in downtown Ball Ground, United Country, Talking Rock Realty. We are in the old Dots restaurant building, and if you're really, really good and you come by, I will show you where Tom Cruise was during the filming of the Personal movie. Friends with oh, yeah. Sue Dinsmore. I will show yeah. you a picture of Tom Cruise and my buddy, Sue Dinsmore. And the smile my, on her face and my was buddy, this buddy, big. Glenn Dinsmore. I uh -huh. have pictures of both of them with Tom Cruise. It now, Glenn so was smiling. Glenn was smiling. But not like Sue <laughs> not was, like smiling. was smiling. But, but people don't understand that movie literally put Ball Ground on the map with a lot of people because on Saturdays I see people out there with their cameras and they're looking for scenes and where did this happen, where did that happen. And it literally happened very close to your Valley Street house. Very close to your well, Valley Street house. Well, people asked, you know, I had just lost Don, so I was not in any frame of mind to participate in all that. But they would say, you know, are you going to go down? Are you going to mm -hmm. you know, stand in your yard and watch? And I, you know, yeah. just, no, I didn't. You know, yeah. I, 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 I did. didn't. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. And it's so weird because... Tom Cruise looked so short to me, but next to Sue, he looked tall. He, you know he liked her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, come but here, anyway, come lady. to Ball Ground tonight. Historical Society meets at 630 at the community building on Civic Drive right beside the tennis court. So come down and get to know this tiny town that we do love and um, get to know all the businesses in town and, and check them all out. <clears throat> you know, I have favorites. And then I have those that I just like to visit every once in a while. So, and, and Dominic's is one of those I would love to eat there every day, but oh my gosh, I love his food. But, you know, get out and get to know these tiny businesses. And in the next, next week, there's going to be an event down at our local brewery, which I have not been in yet, but I know it's very successful and doing great. Oh, and we have the and farmer's market too. And we have the farmer's on market on Saturdays. But the, the brewery is marketing the pizza across the street, and they're helping each other, and so it's pretty cool. And it's, it's what happens in, in tiny towns when folks from other places move in and build successful businesses. So you might think about that. You know what it's time to do? Go to Mike's. Go to Mike's. We love to go to Mike's. We're going to order a meat and three and tea, and we're going to be so tickled when we leave there. We're going to be grinning from ear to ear. I hope that you will get out today and do something fun. Enjoy your day. And please take advantage of living in these tiny towns and get to know all the businesses. We'll see you again soon. I'm Leon ETC. You gave me a